Okay, so let's call this meeting to order. Uh, the Comprehensive Plan Implementation Committee. Um, our agenda was circulated. I'm just going to take a second to um, see if I got an email from Robin Brooks to say she's not going to be here. Um, no. No, nope. and she usually does. So let me just take a second. Um, I will take some notes just in case. Um, so welcome everyone. Um, we have a fairly short, but a few items are needy on our agenda. Is there anything anyone sees to change, add, subtract? We can give a, a liaison update on TBI on the appropriate time. Yeah. <clears throat> Great, thank you, Andy. Um, the one thing I'll say a little bit about, and maybe um, Rick and Joe can chime in, we'll say just a, under the administrative items, um, we did have some time to review the matrix, um, the items that had been highlighted for at least priority attention not to overlook, and we did that. So, um, I'll put that down after the minutes. Okay, I don't see anyone who's joined us from the public. If anybody does join, we will welcome them. I'll keep an eye on my screen. Um, okay, so our first item is review and approval of the minutes of the October 7th meeting. Did anybody see anything that needs correction or editing? I just read them, but I guess I wasn't here. Can't remember. It was on my schedule. It's, well, they, it should say if you were there at the top of the meeting. What if it was I a think, mistake? I thought I was here. It's never a mistake, Andy. I I I'm not listening, so maybe I wasn't. I think you needed to leave early, but you were here. Um, so can I? See hands in terms of approval of our minutes. I I love that. Thank you, Rick, for that hand. You can All right. Okay. So I think it was a couple of weeks ago. Um, Rick and Joe and I went through the matrix items and. We sort of looked quickly at um, sort of the, the number of items that we had on our first review, which was at least a couple of years ago. We um, identified a number under each and every um, big idea. Some had only one or two, but we concentrated on three of the big ideas. Um, um, be, be deliberate about growth was the one that we took up first and then open governance and housing diversity. The, the item with the, the most um, sort of matrix items is actually streets for people, but because the bicycle pedestrian committee was not only formed, but it's really picking up speed and it's um, doing some work some grant writing to get you know some things done on a complete streets policy and um so we left that alone and we went through and found i think about 10 or 12 items 
that we thought were worth looking at again. There's nothing that comes up with urgency. And the thing that I took away from our session was that things are really moving along, it, which, you know, given that we've been working at this for five years, we should see that things are moving along. However, sometimes it feels so slow that you don't realize significant progress is being made on some of these specific items that have been highlighted for attention. So anything, Rick, Joe, you wanna add to that? Um, I, my sense is that these are things for us to keep an eye on as we move forward. Um, it, it's not anything this month or next. In, I think one of the things that's a priority for this meeting is really looking at some of the milestones and a time frame um, post uh, planning board workshop that some of us attended. Now these comments you're making, are these from the work workshop that we had on the 23rd? No, ha has nothing to do with those. I mean, yeah, the strategy review. It, it was a workshop, I call it a workshop, at yeah, 10.30 in the morning yeah. on the 23rd. It, it was a planning board workshop, that's what you're talking about. No, no. So it's in about a meeting, I was with you guys. So sure. was only three, 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 okay, yes, you, yeah, that's right, you were both? Yes, yes, yes. yes. we were all there. there, that's right. <laughs> I'm so sorry, yes, that's right, yes. And so we, but we highlighted some items. There was nothing that I recall, correct me if I'm wrong, that needed like immediate attention. There were things that we sort of see that are, and they, they, they're they up for conversation. Um, I remember so, talking about a couple of things, but I don't think there were any action items. From right. And we were just talking about some development that was going on and some okay. things like that. Okay. And I, I guess the thing is, do we need to look at any of those items for this? here at this meeting and I think not. I think some of them are items that we'll take to, you know, the town manager for conversation, um, and to Sky for conversation to see how those fit in. But there's nothing that we need to really focus on this meeting. Yeah, Su Susan, I would say I would I would agree with you. Nothing real focus. The only real thing that jumped out was adding the conservation commission to a couple of the matrix items where they seemed like they were not included on the original pass, and uh, they probably should be for a handful of them where, where they were added as a committee contact for some of the goals. Okay. <laughs> so in terms of any attention to it today? No, none needed. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, so that's just to sort of update folks that we all, apologies, <laughs> we all had a had a look at that. And and let me just ask Pam and um, Andy, had you had a thorough look at some of those matrix items before, or or was that kind of a new look for you? I mean, it's not fascinating reading, so it's not something that you would you know delve into and and, but it's you know it's. It, I, I I had seen them. Yeah. Yeah, first time for me. Got it. That's one of the reasons I thought it would be helpful. At, since you've got the background now, you've got you yeah. know, uh, the, the lay of the land. Okay, so let's move on to our next agenda item, Recode Matters, um, the planning board workshop. Um, and this, you know, this, I have not prepared any big report from that. And I, I think all of us can chime in. Several of us were there. Um, I walked away with um, a much greater sense of clarity from uh, Phil Saucier, the town attorney who has a planning background. As a result of his knowledge of main law and form based code and a pretty thorough review of our draft code he had some very specific things to say and a lot of them a lot of his comments focused on waivers and some of them i think even addressed 
at least one of the concerns that had been raised, comments have, that had been given in the Coffee with Rico sessions. Um, Are we going to get a summary of that, or is there, um, when you say waivers, was he for waivers, against waivers? I haven't had a chance to. What we did get, and it was circulated to the committee, um, it, it will take a few minutes to, to um, really read it, is Bill Saucier did give a memo. I think it was about a three-page memo. You sent to us? Yep. Yeah. I think yeah. I sent it. I, somebody sent somebody it. Somebody sent yeah. it in a window. Just if you're searching page. for it, it yeah. might be from me. It might be from Scott. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and it, you know, it was not exhaustive, but it gave um, some good background and it focused on, um, and, and of course, the thing about the session, the workshop was that he was able to take questions and um, and it's recorded. I don't know how well it will come through in terms oh, I, of. I get so much to do with it. Yeah. yeah. So watch it. Um, was so was he supportive? Was he in favor of it, or he had some issues, or? I think you know he he came at the code um, with quite a lot of familiarity with form based code, and what he talked about from the from the get go is that you know form based code comes up against some challenges with Maine land use regulations because Maine's land use regulations were written a long time ago, basically. That's my layperson's understanding. And I did see, you know, I heard some comments in the discussion acknowledging that the planning board had uh, had, has looked for, and that we have looked for some ways to have some flexibility in the town center code. And at the same time, we may have, we may have built in too much in terms of waiver possibility in ways that will stymie us. So I should probably be quiet now and let somebody who knows a lot more about <laughs> code. Well, the question, I, I, I saw this guy, you sent us a link. I hit the link and it just goes to planning board meetings. Um, so on the 24th, I see meetings, I see a gender chapter, full draft ordinance town attorney memorandum, but yep, that's dated that's the 18th. That's it. That was that was before the meeting. Yes, he sent it before the meeting. It was oh, something you could read sorry. prior to the oh, meeting. Oh, okay. So he yeah. didn't, so he used that. Okay, so what's in that is what he talked about. Yep. Right? Yeah. Okay. That's a good place to start. Okay. I will add, I think I think Susan's done a good job of talking about it. Um, I'll give a little bit more context. So the issue with waivers and zoning codes in Maine is that um planning boards cannot give waivers for um, what are considered zoning standards in Maine. And I don't know if everyone here was here. I'll, I'll just say this, you know, we're being recorded. Um, so it's for the record, I guess. Um, they can't give waivers for zoning standards in Maine. So that's like um, lot size, frontages. Um, he kept and, saying dimensions. Yeah, dimensions. Yeah. Height, height, was, height was the big one that was getting us with the form-based code. Um, so he... That was the issue, and that had been flagged by Tom's uh, Lister. Sorry, <laughs> with Tom Associate today and Phil Associate. Um, that had been flagged by the codes officer, Tom Lister, as a potential issue. So it wasn't really a huge surprise that he brought that issue up. Um, what I wasn't necessarily expecting was that he had a really great solution, I think, for dealing with that, um, which is that you don't make it. So we had built in some waverability to heights in the center zones to make right. things more flexible. And so rather than making that a waiver, you allow it by right that say you can have a building at 50 feet, but to get to that 50 feet threshold, you have to do a couple extra like things. Um, you have to hit a couple benchmarks. I think that's what he was getting. For example, yeah. like if Crooker was to build, not Crooker, but whoever buys that property and wants to build a, a convention center, they're mm -hmm. gonna have a motel and a big mm -hmm. convention center. They have a limit on height. I didn't think there was a limit. Yeah, there are height limits. Yeah, I think there are height limits everywhere. Also throughout yeah, the, the centers. Yeah. Yeah, I, know, do I, didn't, I didn't find it restricted, 
But yeah, 50 feet could be restricted. You're saying never go. No, that was an example. I don't, oh, know, the, oh, I don't okay. know. I don't know it off the top Perfect. of my head. Sorry, Andy. Yep. Um, that was just an example that, like, say by right, you're allowed to have 50 feet, but unless you meet like several criteria, you right. can only do 40. Right. And that's basically rather than giving the playing board the ability to waive the 40 foot requirement and yep. give up the 50, yep. it's that you can have 50. So it's like you start at the top and then yep. make it harder to get there, kind of. Okay. All right. That makes sense. So you build it into the code. But you make the criteria clear. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. And the the design aspects, I don't think were an issue. I did try oh, to clarify yeah. that. That was what I understood was that those were okay because those were not those dimensional standards. So um, they're waverable. So said. those are waverable, I believe. Yeah. So one yeah. of the things we S yeah. Sky the only one of the one of the takeaways that I had though was he there was a distinction that. If the standards apply to specific parts of town, that they're considered zoning ordinances un un unwaivable. Where I really, I, I can that, him, but I really thought he was saying we can have specific design standards throughout exactly. town and different, and in, you know, so like tops of center zones can have the design standards. And that they can still be waivable because they're design and not dimensional. Correct. So and that was, yeah, and that was the key takeaway that I heard too, was that, okay, that yeah. they should be okay. segregated into design standards um, yes. in order to make them waivable by the planning board. If yeah. they're not town-wide, exactly. Yep. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So like zoning would need to have, yes. I think we're all on the same page here. Um, and you know, I think we'll have things checked again if we need to, but um I thought it was a really good workshop and yeah. that I felt very hopeful coming out of it. Um since then I have been very busy <laughs> and haven't had a lot of time to work on this. Um, but I think that's a good recap of where it where it was and um I don't know if this is appropriate, but Mark and Tom and I are meeting with the consultants on Thursday to just kind of discuss the next steps and stuff. I don't have any more updates than that, though. Okay, just making a note of that. <laughs> Thursday. So we'll know more after that in terms of the next milestone or two. Yeah, and I think how things are looking going forward. Yeah. Good. Okay. Hey, Joe, what's up? Yeah, um, so question. Uh, what I'm curious about is what uh, the the town manager and assistant town manager and the planning board thought of the presentation in terms of content. I mean, I thought it was an excellent presentation, but because of the the legal ease involved being other than a lawyer, uh, it. it it didn't seem like it posed great difficulties to us, but I have no idea how the planning board received it or or the town manager. So can you, do you know anything about that, uh, Sky, that you could uh, relate? Sure. Well, Mark loves legally, this is all I'll say is the first <laughs> thing. Um, but I think he and I were on the same page that we went out of it feeling more hopeful because we knew about the waiver issue going into that. You know, we'd seen Phil's memo. We had heard from Tom. We had been really worried that that could be, you know, a significant um, issue for this draft mm -hmm. recode. Um, and um, so I think that we were both pretty similarly feeling, you know, wanting to see what Phil had to say and um, that we felt very hopeful that he had good suggestions that he's even knowledgeable about other places that have form-based code in Maine. Um, Mark really likes Phil a lot, and I, he's a big supporter of this project. So I think from the town manager's aspect, he was good with it. Um, this is not Jeff's wheelhouse. Um, that's the assistant town manager. So I think like he didn't really have any strong feelings on it. You know, probably similar to Mark and I, except for it's just it's not his project. He's not going to take it over or anything. Um, and the planning board. It really likes to leave meetings right after the end. <laughs> Not a lot of conversation. I don't feel like I'm remembering any distinct conversations. Um, I don't know if anyone else had any. I, I don't think there was any issues with it. I don't think that there, I think everyone felt, you know, that we were glad Phil had looked at it, that it gave us op opportunities um, to move with it. Don had some thoughts that he wants to kind of see 
on how things might be like presented in terms of like how he sees them. But I think I think otherwise it was just pretty good, honestly. Good. I didn't hear anything. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? That was a pretty important. Um, the other thing to mention there is that uh, I think there are at least two select board members there. Um, and which two were they? Anne and Ryan. Yeah. Ryan, see the one that sits on him. Yeah. Because he had a lot of questions when we did the TDI yeah. TIF thing. Yeah. So that's good. So he's staying involved. Good. Yeah. yeah. They both come to things. Yeah. Good. Um, and the other, what am I thinking about? Um, it, toward the end of this, the workshop, um, Mark engaged with it. I mean, the consultants were, you know, on Zoom, listening to it all. They found the comments helpful. Um, you know, uh, that was good to hear. Um, but Mark's conversation and questions with them toward the end indicated that you know based on this and um, some other comments that we've had we will need to have another draft and i'm sure that that's at the center of this meeting coming up on thursday between um mark tom sky and the consultants so we'll see what, what meeting is that thursday no, this is just a their meeting with the consultants to talk about next steps. Okay. Yeah, um, you know, meeting. given that there will be some fairly, it's some of the, you know, we went through this whole process with Tom Lister's review of the code. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of very minor things, proofreading things, but there are a few substantive things. And now we have a few more based on this waiver stuff. And um, we're and, gonna have some pushback from the developers on a few things too. Well, what you know, what we're dealing with is wanting a code that's going to be legally sound, and that's what we need to get to. And I think one of the questions, you know, um, I didn't understand where waivers and variances, where those boundaries were, and I came away from that workshop understanding so a little more. I actually just had a thought. I, I don't know what you're referring to exactly, Andy, when you say developers will have issues, you know, like specifically, I don't know the specifics. Yep, I can hear. Yeah, no, no, I know. Um, but I know that in the past, one of the issues that I heard was that that some developers didn't like the reliance so much on waivers. And you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think I heard this, that they didn't love maybe the reliance on waivers because they wanted to be able to just do things and that waivers meant more time and planning boards yep. and stuff. And if that were an issue, <laughs> not, saying, not saying it is exactly that um the way that we would be going about this now by having things allowed by right that you have to have certain steps that you need might be preferred as well. Uh, no, I think they're okay with that. Okay. They're more concerned, and I don't know if this is appropriate time to talk about it or not, but they're not? still hung up on drive-throughs and the limits, and they just want to make sure that. And I think we've addressed it, but, but we need to make it clear enough to them to understand that there will be drive-throughs. There's a tremendous need for drive-throughs from the public, as well as from the development world or the owners of, of drive-throughs. And in fact, you'll hear them say, everybody's doing double drive-throughs now. Um, and as I tell them, the concern is to make sure that the queuing and the, and the safety aspect, yeah. and to some extent, the view shed um, is addressed. Um, they just won't, and they, they feel they can deal with that. They feel that it's um, the modern designs are there. They just want to make sure that they aren't restricted from doing just a bank or just a pharmacy as opposed to a coffee shop. I think, I think there were quite a few, uh, there was quite a, a yeah. substantial modification based on too. the feedback. I do too, but I don't so think I, they've seen that yet. Well, it's come out in the draft. I know. I'm just saying. I don't think they've. Seen um, it. Maybe we should maybe <laughs> allow. Yeah. You know, yeah. we'll look a couple pages from the draft that really get at that yeah. to show them. Yeah. If and that, the, and the biggest did. issue is they have run through some scenarios, and um, it, they are still concerned with bringing the requirement to bring the building to the side of the road, 
Um, they're concerned with the with the parking in back, with the loading in back, with the wheelchair accessibility. You got to come through the front. Um, they just have a hard time with their parking all the way in the back. But isn't there going to be a sketch? Well, that's they, they gonna worked, look at some of this. They worked on it and they didn't like it, so they haven't. They didn't like it because they can't make it work. But I told them, this is part of my recap, is you're going to have to give us some visuals other than a narrative. I did receive a narr narrative, which I haven't completely digested yet. From the, and Basically, they're going to show you that, yes, they can put a building up there. Yes, but they can put it up front. But this, these are the problems. And they wrote the problems in a narrative. <clears throat> I just got Wednesday morning, so yeah, was today. yeah. So yes. some more time to look Very at that. Fine. Okay, <clears throat> so now we get to perhaps our most time-consuming element. But before we move on, and move the the next item is the milestones ahead, which time frame milestones. I was just I think I didn't quite finish my previous thought because I. It's a thought I'm not happy with, which is Mark outlined, given that we need another draft and where it is, where we are in the calendar year, we are not going to, and this has been a looming possibility, but it came out as a pronouncement, we are not going to be able to make the May town meeting to have this, the code, to have recode on the warrant. Um, however, um, that doesn't mean that as soon as it is ready, a special town meeting could not be called, but May is not going to be when it's on the warrant. There are pros and cons to that. The pros is that the warrant is all, always a full <laughs> package and recode is a big package in itself. So we might, it might be, um, we might be better served as a committee and the town to have a, a special town meeting to address recode. So on to milestones ahead in the process. And this is the part of the meeting where we're gonna slow way down. So anybody who's watching this on YouTube, you might wanna go get a snack because this is, we're working this out in real time with a real calendar, and um, the, this is not a preconceived report. So the next thing that's gonna happen is a meeting on Thursday with the consultants and planning department and the town manager. And I would guess that what's on that agenda is a number of things but it's when we might get the feedback so that they can begin the new draft, the next, the, the next two final draft. And that's the big question mark, because I know that things are very busy in the planning department. Is it even possible to project that at this point, Sky, knowing sort of, the the sort of the um, the things that are going into that feedback process, Tom's comments, public comment, um, Bill's comments, Bill's comments, which might need a little work. Yeah, um, I think we'll want to be taking any comments from the developers. Do you think as well? And, would be my guess, you know, we want to try to gather everything that we can. We would, we would, but I think that, so the thing is to see if we could have maybe a community forum that would allow people to hear responses to their questions mm -hmm. um, and to encourage developers um, to engage with those areas, you know, drive-throughs, um, parking, some of those issues that have they've been raised before, um, and they've been some of them have been substantially addressed. I think so. It's just a matter of are we at the point where 
they have another tweak or two <laughs> or or not. And I can totally understand if people have not been able to engage with this draft. I, I just think it's, I think it's getting close, I guess. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing that we have to have in my mind is they're buying into it. It's just, it's, we don't want to um, have it be like tomorrow's probably going to be. Um, we want to be all together. <laughs> Completely forgot it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I'm flying Thursday. And I hope I can get on my plane. To be honest with you, no matter how it goes. Yeah. You know. Um. But I mean, and they want that too. And I think it's important that we all that we have their support. Right. Yes. No. Absolutely. Um. But I think I think without some real um. I know it's a matter of time, money, and effort to yeah. test the code, you know, and sort of say, what, uh, what do you want to do? And what's in the way? Um, is it is it you're having a hard time letting go of what you're used to? Or have you have you actually No, the, the, they're gonna, and it's upon me, I believe to explain to them that they have to be clear of their concerns so that we can address them. Right? Yeah, it's I think it's at the point now where we've been through it enough that if if you can't support this, I need to know exactly why. Not just, right. I don't like the concept, I don't like the word form-based code, whatever. But I mean, they've got to be specific with this and why yeah. and for us to make any ground. If, and, and they realize that. And it's it's going to take a little bit of time because they're busy, just like yeah. everybody no, is. Absolutely. Shorter staff and everybody, but we've got to do this and we've got to get through it five years as long as that. It is, it is. So I'm going to just push them. So, so, that so that's somehow. that last piece is something that um, I think we have to kind of prepare for and encourage and do some outreach for. Like, when would we hold that? Um, Are we talking them looking at the current draft? Yeah, or the current or draft. The new draft. No, the current draft. Because I think what I, I'm hearing Sky say at the moment is that we we would want developer feedback in this round going into this next draft. And that's not to say there wouldn't be any more, but that we would like to hear what the, I mean, this is the public draft. We don't have their feedback. We have their, we have their feedback that, uh, that resulted in this draft. Okay, what do you think of it, right? Okay. Um, and so, and and one of the things we've been hearing is that uh, that there would be sort of a test case, you know, a sketch on um, a property. I think in the Topson Fair Mall, right? Looking specifically around questions around parking and positioning, building positioning, entrances, whatever, um, to sort of see how does this code work for their from their point of view um, from the retail point of view. So I think we have to think about scheduling that um, because I, I think we, I mean, my thinking is when do we want this wrapped up going to the consultants so that they can do their work and get this next draft out to us? Um, there, there, are, there are quite a few moving parts and there's the, the internal work with, I think, Sky, you're putting together Tom's Bills, the community um, comments, and the not yet developer comments. All of those things are on you to put together. Um, and and you know, a couple of us were involved in meeting with Tom. I'd be glad to meet with you around that. Um, but my hope is that before the by the middle of December, that could be completed. Is that? Too optimistic. What are you looking at? Please. I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to stare <laughs> Sky down. She's looking at me. <laughs> I don't want to bore a hole in her head. Um, I think when we were setting this agenda, Susan, we said we were going to set milestones without a calendar. Without a calendar. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay. Um, I just don't want to commit to things and then disappoint you guys. Yeah. I, there's yeah. still a lot of effort, I feel like, I'm trying to do to bring all the threads together. together. Yeah. Um, 
because in all honesty, I know you guys are just thinking about chapter 225, but this process has spilled beyond it into yeah. 175. Yeah. Um, and, and part of the challenges. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it is. And, and I will be honest, I have not thought about recode in a good week. Um, yeah, <laughs> a week off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was not vacation. I just didn't think about it. Right. Um, and that I think, sorry, I totally lost my train of thought. So thinking about milestones without dates, <laughs> there's, there's, <laughs> let's just say the next big piece is compiling mm -hmm. all of the current feedback so that it can be given to the consultants so they can do a draft. So that's the compiling and the draft. I think as part of this input process, we need to schedule something with developers. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at Andy, who's looking at his phone. How do you know I'm not taking notes of this meeting? Well, what I'm, what I'm wondering is, does it, like with, say, three weeks notice, would it be appropriate to sort of, because we could have a community forum for more than the developers, or should we have a session for the developers looking at their specific concerns? I, I think this might, it would be my question. I mean, yeah. I've got four or five developers that right. have expressed to me, are there others out there that are going to say they've never had a chance, even though I know we've had advertisers all over the world. The thing that Lee uh, Lee Toyota didn't, didn't he say something at one time kind of caught us off bat. I never had a chance to, to uh, you know participate in this process, but he has. But I mean, yeah. <clears throat> are there other people out there that that we think are going to give us a hard time from the final draft to the time when we go to to the select board decides whether it's going to be on the warrant? Is there a period there that we feel that we haven't addressed anybody? And I'm just talking out loud. I think it would be fair. I'm going to be with uh, Jim Howard tomorrow, and I can ask him as, as a leader of the community to see if he can round up the Dan Catlins and, and, and Jim Howards and the people that are doing the development um, to, and come to, back to us as a as a, a group that represents that part, that part of the community and get these concerns addressed now so that we can't just can't go on forever. So try to get a deadline from now. When can you be ready? When can you come with us with your final concerns? Because that's basically where we are. It is. It is. Yeah. Um, and I don't mind reaching out to them and, and getting an answer. And, and you know, if Jim is the leader, maybe Dan can be but somebody has to finally come in and say, okay, this is if we these are our final concerns. Let's address them and move on. In the last conversation I had with Jim, he had every intention of looking at this draft. But I know life gets busy and, you know, other things take over. Yeah, but life is going to change with this. So, we, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and again, yeah. I want their, and we all want their support. But the big question to me right now is, does it make more sense to have like an office hours session, office hours four, um, or you know, one on this particular draft so that we can schedule the consultants? I think that's an important piece um, for the developers. Well, you could say let's have an office hour draft. We, I just can't set the date yet. I think I, I think we have to work with them. Rick's got his hand up. It's a different, yeah. 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 So I think. I think we do need to close the loop on this. One of the things we had planned to do with the developers when Julie was transitioning out was scheduling a follow-up meeting to, you know, we, the developers comments, we had all those sessions with them. We incorporated the feedback into the draft, but then we never closed the loop on saying, okay, this is how your feedback was incorporated what was missed, what's still an issue, because yeah. we just couldn't schedule it with Julie's departure. Yeah. So that is the, that's the meeting that I, I think we're talking about having. Yeah. And Ooh. so my question for, question for Andy is when they worked on this, uh, you know, 
study, you know, this paperwork exercise on on the development? Were they using the that most recent draft or the original one they had? I believe they were using the most recent. Okay. Um, I can double check, but I, again, it's the big thing is, is, and I think, I don't know if Wesley, <laughs> what I guess I'm trying to, to avoid is when Wesley's in the room and they ask the question, Wesley has the answer of, yes, you can do this, but they can't define that in the narrative. The last thing we want is every time they come in is, is, yeah, Leslie said we could do this, but now somebody is interpreting different, a different planning board, and they're saying you, you can't. The clarity of what you can do is the concern, I guess. If they can't read that or find that, we've got to make sure that it's clear. Absolutely. I'll, um, I'll just add in really quickly that the person interpreting it in some ways is not the planning board, it's Tom. Because yeah. okay. he, he's the one who... Oh, that was, a, that was another comment I was going to bring up. I want to make Tom... clear that I, I think he's that that's just important to, to think about that like yeah i don't disagree with you in premise just mm -hmm. that it is that individual yeah. rather than um, one board and then you have all the waiver options too <laughs> that throw in that it's going to be a learning experience for us for the community for the developer i mean there's no way it's not going to be it's just the thing is they are the ones that build and if they don't build we this doesn't mean anything so they are an important stakeholder group, but we've also got um, probably a dozen people who have taken the time to look at the code and give us comments and show up in community forums, and we need to meet with them as well. But I think that you've helped me, Rick, understand that we need to have this loop closed with the developers. And right. um, The only okay. fly I'm going to throw in the ointment was Tom Lister's comments were fairly extensive with the with the red lining um you know there may be a couple of things in there that you know may not be what the developers have seen before um so do we want to go with this draft or the draft that has tom's comments incorporated How Tom's comments would have actually changed it that much? I don't think so. I, I don't, I don't think so either. Yeah, uh, I mean, he was catching a lot of little things. Yeah, he he found a few substantive things, but I don't think those were anything that the developers had really focused on in their review and in the, those um, office hour sessions. Um, so I think we ought to see if we can get their feedback on this draft and all of that get put together. Um, Let me make one other comment that I hear often, and, and, and we're going to have to massage this a little bit. When the, the development community looks at the 2019 comprehensive plan and they look at the renderings of the for the, the new how Thompson Fair Mall might look with the buildings up on the side and the parking in there, that was a vision of a group of people in 2019. They basically laugh at that and say that will never, ever be developed that way. Not in our lifetime, probably not in the next generation. It's just not feasible from a um, cost standpoint. So that's the, they've got that mindset. And every every now and then we can break through it. And, and, and uh, our consultant's good at that. And during those meetings, it's a saying, you, yes, but you can do that. So I'm just saying we've got, we're almost over that hurdle, but I don't think we're 100%. Just no, sharing. I mean, the, the 2019 comprehensive plan had some sketch possibilities, yep. right? That's what they were. And it was a vision of a direction that they would like to go in. And it was greater per capita involvement than we've ever had in a comprehensive plan. And so that has been our guide. And, and, and I think it's been a wonderful series of sessions hearing from developers and then having the input from the consultants to, to sort of work with things. Right. And, we're only the whole focus right now 
has been with the town center. That's been the focus where the developers, you know, have put their attention. When Tom Lister read the code, it goes way beyond that. So there are some small and large things there. Um, but I do think it's it. I no, I think there's a lot. There's a lot of we've gained, and in, in, in particular the master planning and the way Leslie talks about the flexibility that you'll have in a, in a fifty or a hundred acre parcel. Um, eventually, we know we're going to eventually have the hundred acres come over into some kind of a uh, recode. But um, I think, as Leslie explains, that they understand that yes, we'll be able to do it. We have to give some um, and. They feel that from the day one to the day, we've given quite a bit too. So it's not, don't misunderstand me. It's not, a, a, I hate this thing. It's just, I gotta understand, I gotta understand it. I'm not 100% there yet. But so. I'm coming away from this conversation thinking that we want, if we can, we want the developer's input on this draft, uh, knowing that more changes are happening, but their input has been, is reflected in this draft. And I think it would be worth having a two hour session. Um, so let me, let me reach out tomorrow and um, see if I can get them. What, what's the time frame you'd like to see? Well, <laughs> I mean, is it, yeah. is it six weeks? Is it six months? I just, no, no, I'm thinking the sooner the better because the draft is right here. You know, the draft is before us. It's a matter of what's the time frame that they would need to really have a look at it seriously and for us to schedule with the with uh, the consultants. So right now, today, tomorrow's the 5th. Um, is it possible before the end of November? Let's just look at the calendar and see. Um, I mean, it's the very last week is Thanksgiving week, but could we look at the end, like the, the 21st or something? Could we look at, I'm just, I don't know if at all whether or not that's feasible. I'm just- I'm thinking the first week of December, but I know. I think that would be fine. The first week of December? Yeah, I, yeah. I think there, there's just a lot of stuff we have to do on this and, yeah. you know. The end of the month too is the Thursday and Friday of Thanksgiving yeah. in the day. I'm not I'm, available yeah. Thanksgiving week, honestly. I'm thinking, I'm I'm thinking somewhere between the first and the fourteenth in that area and see. I think the December, December would be a good 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 time, um, honestly, to shoot for that. And I agree that I think having a meeting with the developers is a good idea because we did have a meeting with the public for you all did. I was not there yeah. in June. Yeah. Um, and I don't think we should have a meeting with the public until we get another draft. Not because I don't want people, you know, to have comments on this. I just think that there may be people that would say, well, I commented on this back in June. Did you do nothing with my comments? So I think it would be better to then present a new draft to the public personally, okay. um, just to show progress. Whereas the developers did not get a targeted meeting like that one for this draft. And it would probably be a good idea to do another one of those office hours with them. So what does that time frame sound like to other committee members? Um, first week of December. First or second week of December. <laughs> Good. <laughs> no, I thought um, trying to do anything before Thanksgiving is, is out of the question. And the the early period right after Thanksgiving and before people really get ramped up for Christmas, uh, as Andy suggested, the first two weeks sometime in there would be good. Yeah. So between December 2nd and 15th, that's how the calendar falls. Yeah. For good. my two cents, it doesn't, don't let me drive it, but the first weekend would be better for me. The first week would be better, the second through the sixth. Yep. That's what I'll shoot for. Great. I would say try to keep it off that Friday. I don't know if I'll be here. Yeah. Okay, right. so let's so, think in terms of... I didn't of... think you'd do it. Knowing <laughs> me, you probably... <laughs> Wasn't okay. super worried, figured I'd throw it out there. <laughs> I will be main. So let's do it. Two through five. Okay, good. Okay. Oh, goodness. Um... So the I, I didn't realize that we right an, an item that should have been on our agenda is actually looking at 
the grid of questions of um I I have more questions to send you to. You need to remember to send me more. And okay. I, they're 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 flagged, but you don't get them soon email. Yeah, yeah. Um well should we we have time unless why don't we do this? Andy, why don't you give us an update on TDI and see how that goes? Because I don't want to squeeze out the last time. And then um, if we have another 15 minutes, we can have a look at those questions. Some of them have been answered, but some of them are still hanging out. Um, you've already heard half of it, probably, and that was the developers' concerns because they yeah. were at TDI. Um, the other half has to do with the, the study. Remember, we commissioned Wright Pierce to do right. the uh, water sewer infrastructure expansion study. And, and that study, again, to remind everybody, is not just to get infrastructure across 295, it's to improve what we have on this side, too, for, for all the different zones that we're talking about here. The only uh, for today was the first day I actually saw that the area that was the scope that we were dealing with. And it's everything that we're looking at except for across Sandal, Sandal, um, um, Sandalin. Sandalin, except for their properties actually in this, the, the infrastructure study because it's, you know, it, because of the way of the land and how sewer, if it was ever developed, might flow into the existing pump stations and the new pump stations. You mean the cap and bubble part? Yeah, that yep. area and yep. San Sandelman is his name. Yeah, yeah. He owns all that property oh, yeah. between there. So yeah. Yeah. we included that. And of course the schools and the and the uh, developments. Um can't remember the name of that either. Um the road that goes over to Highland Means. So uh, Can Am? Can Am Drive, yeah. Yes. Um the annex. The annex, annex area. Yeah. Yeah, that's in there too. And any expansion that might be in the annex, but all these pump stations that exist, um, some of them are, are uh, of adequate size, some aren't, and they're, they're uh, strategically located throughout. So they're looking at if we run a main from this area, create a new pump station, and run a main over here, that will relieve all the all the uh, pressure that we have on Main Street or any future growth in Main Street. And so they're looking at all those scenarios, not just from a water <clears throat> and wastewater standpoint, but from a strategically, um, is it the cost factors thrown in there? Yeah, we in the perfect world, we'd run double lines through every every ditch that we dug just for, just for future use. So we're looking at a lot of stuff. We had gone over um, across 295 to especially the 100 acres, but we went all the way out to <clears throat> the next road, the Meadow Cross Road. Yeah. Um, but when they looked at that, they said that's really it's 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 such a small portion. It's so rural, and the zoning's not going to change. You're not going to have 200 unit private buildings out there. Anything that's going to change, and the cost of running sewer out there and water is just yeah. pretty much prohibitive. So not just the hundred acres, but when you go out 196, you actually come to a crest on a on the hill and it's after Cantrell in that area there. Yeah. So they we changed kind of changed our the boundaries. focus yeah. to that crest because that crest, any development in those areas would be gravity fed down to the new pump station. So is that when past? you get on the other side, then you've got to put another pump station to come up to the top and it's just it's too rural. But that's <clears> past <throat> Ivanhoe, right? No? No, it's this before side. Ivanhoe. Okay. Before Ivanhoe. I don't know it's Ivanhoe. I mean this it's before Ivanhoe, it's before Thompson Mobile Home Park, it's before Eagle River, which when you think about it, you're like, what? But I don't know how much more is going to develop out there. So. When you look at the yeah. map, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. It's in the report, and it will be there. It's just we're not going to spend a lot of money designing or preliminarily designing a water sewer line to go there because we think it'd be a waste of money. And when you, sort of the scope that was given to them for this study, are we looking sort of at a 10-year period? Or are we looking beyond that? Well, we're looking at, for example, we're looking at land. What what is the maximum build out? Yeah. The hundred acres. What do we think? What do we think the maximum build out is there? And we're we're going to design for that maximum build out because you can't put a half a pump station in or a, or a 
uh, eight inch sewer line under the interstate and then go, oh, okay, it's <laughs> time to put another eight inch or, or a 16 inch. So we're gonna size everything assuming that eventually it's gonna be built out. And what's the stage of this study? It's going to be done before the end of the year. Um, and when when I say built out, they look at a maximum gallons per day out of a piece of property. In other words, what's when that's built out, what's the maximum gallons of, of uh, sewage that are going to come yeah. out of there per day? And then they sign, size the pump station for what might happen. Actually, they don't sign it for max. They go 80%. So this buffers they build in there yeah. from experience of designing sewer and water systems throughout the state.